so this is going to be recorded and it's going to be showcased live on social media. And after this, we are going to market it to different platforms on our podcasts, on the programs like uh, TikTok is going to be there, LinkedIn, we are going to market it to YouTube and all the digital platforms that we get the opportunity to lay our hands on. So this is going to be recorded. And in the next two minutes, Mr. Charles, if you are ready, your kick starts. Are you okay? Yeah, sure. Sure, Great. I'm available. Great. So I just want to special welcome all of you, like I said. We have great speakers, Mr. Chasa Indago, who is the co-founder of IBM NJ, uh, Tamale Learning Center. And also, I believe that now there's also another chapter to this. We have the Yendi Center too coming, and maybe he will talk about that. And uh, he started this journalism school. And the ups and downs, I've seen him start and all the things that he has gone through. We also have uh, Naj Lau, Mama G herself, the Nikki Minaj of our time. Hope you are doing great. So, yes, yes, I'm awesome. I'm awesome. Thank you. <laughs> great. Great. And we have uh, Zachary Adam, welcome. Thank you very much, I am. Great. I'm glad to be here. I appreciate it. All right. So in two minutes, we'll be live on Facebook, another platform that people can monitor. Right. So let's welcome Mr. Chasa Indago, who will share his story about how he started his school and uh, all the things, the great things that he has done from the one till day. So Mr. Chas, the floor is yours. Well, uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Mr. Mustafa. I prefer to call you confidence. <laughs> yes, and uh, you are known for uh, confidence uh, for your confidence level either than anything and so let me say that I'm actually very happy and so excited to be part of this program or this summit uh, having invited me to share my experiences uh, how I started and how far I have gone so that it will inspire uh, the youth of today I think it is an honor well, my name is Charles Ayendago, and uh, I am the director of the Institute of Business Management and Journalism, Tamale Learning Center. Um, as he did mention, uh, we also have another center in Yindi right now, where we have uh, a principal there running it. Well, um, the road has not been rosy at all, and it will never be rosy for anybody. And so what I would premise my uh, advice or inspiration on is that anyone listening to, to us today should know that it has never been easy and it will never be easy because life is made up of up and downs. Uh, it is a journey, life is a journey. And so in that journey, you would have mountains to climb. You would have valleys to descend. You would have potholes to cross. You would have tons on your way. Now, when all these things come your way, it doesn't mean that is the end of the journey. And I'm happy, uh, Mr. Musafa, to uh, have uh, Mr. Uh, Madam uh, Alima uh, with us here. I think uh, Alima knows part of the story when we were together at Bishara. So Alima, I say good afternoon to you. 
and good afternoon to all uh, those who are on this platform. Charles Indago, as I said, is my name. And the journey started somewhere uh, 2008. That is my passion for radio and my passion for media work. And in 2008, I found myself with uh, Justice FM. And let me state categorically that as I worked for Justice FM for one solid year, uh, there was no external motivation for me. Uh, all motivation was internal. It was inbuilt. It was instinct. And so I never gave up. Uh, I say that because I was not on a payroll and I never received even one CD from anybody for doing what I was doing. I produced some programs and introduced some programs. I remember one of the programs was a community bench, which was actually a talk of the town. I, work, uh, I was in the newsroom as well. I was one of the newscasters and I did so much. But upon all these things, uh, it wasn't matching with remuneration, but I worked with passion. And so I never looked at the challenges or what I would gain, but I looked at what I wanted to become in future and took it as a learning process, a platform to learn. And so one day I was there after a year when I received a call. And then that is where I got, I found myself uh, at Bishara Radio. And I managed that radio station alone. I was the only person there with one Pastor Moses. We did a test transmission and everything until such a time that uh, we're giving the green light to bring people on board. And so Bishara Radio was not also an easy one. Uh, it was up and downs. There were up and downs here and there. And so uh, I didn't also give up from that point because I had started from somewhere and out of that dedication, passion for the work, I got that opportunity. Let me state that I never applied to Bishara Radio to become a manager or a program director or anything. But out of the work I was doing at Justice, I got that opportunity. So I got employment before uh, uh, tendering in my application. So that is the essence of hard work, passion, commitment, and dedication when you find yourself doing anything. So I was there, Alima joined me later, and so many other people. Then we went through the hustle and battle. Later on, we were put on a stipend. That never discouraged me. So from there, I uh, Discovery TV, if you remember, they were the first TV station in the, in the North. Discovery TV came. And when it came, I decided to join them. So that was where I left Bishara Radio, and I was the head of news of Discovery TV. Uh, but then uh, the, the current uh, manager of uh, NTV, Mr. Enoch Nashiru, he was the administrator. Then I was the head of news. Then other people joined from Accra later. So uh, let me state once again that it was the worst point <laughs> in my life because throughout my stay there, I used my resources just like I used when I was at Justice and Bishara. I used my own resources to do whatever that I did at that time because none of us were on a, okay, I would say none of us, maybe people were on salary, but I was not on salary. And we did the work out of passion and dedication once again. Then certain circumstances came in and, well, the station went down. I was asked to go by the CEO to go and manage Discovery TV, a Discovery Hotel. So I managed that hotel for one year. But I was not discouraged because I had a vision. I had something ahead of me. I had a goal. I had something I was perceived. Not money, not uh, insults, not castigation could actually send me back because I was focused. And this is where everybody's attention to that at a point in time though i was not receiving anything at a point in time i was angered
And this is where I would dwell my I was on it because we are we are we are uh, in a public uh, uh, domain. So out of that anger, out of that insult I received from somebody, I picked I would. So from there I told myself I work at Radio Justice, no remuneration. I work at Discovery TV, no remuneration. I came here to manage Discovery uh, Hotel. And this is the results that I get. Insult, not appreciation. So I told myself I will never work for anybody again. I would never work, I repeat, I would never work for anybody again. So out of that anger came the existence or the establishment of IBM and J. But then it was only school of journalism. So I told myself I'll set up my own business. I am a media person. I have a background in communication. I am a journalist and I am a professional teacher. So with all these qualities, if I start a media institution, I should be able to train professionals because we had no institution in the Northern sector that was training students or people who wanted to become journalists or communicators. And even as we speak, there is no accredited private media institution in the whole of the Northern sector, apart from the Institute of Business Management and Journalism. So we, I started it with the help of the late Alassan Imoro, a veteran journalist, may he soon rest in perfect peace. He said, Charles, I will support you. It's a good idea. Go ahead. And this wonderful man gave me the backing. And that was the genesis of the School of Journalism. Now, at a point in time, we have to scout for affiliation because we wanted to do the right thing. We wanted to issue certificates to people that can use, will be able to use the certificate for further studies or apply for employment. And then uh, there will not be any questions. But thank God today, most of our students are finished their top up at GIJ, others are at UDS. When you go to tattoo, you, they, they, are, they are uncountable. Now, I want to draw your attention to this particular thing, the, the, the anger aspect. And then let everyone know that anger is not a bad thing. Anger is not a bad thing. Anger is just a natural human emotion characterized by feelings of displeasure, hostility, or antagonism towards someone or something. So it is not a bad thing. But you see, it is how you turn the anger to that makes it negative or positive. So you are right if you become angry. You are never wrong. And it is not a mistake if you become angry. In fact, if I was not angry at that time, the Institute of Business Management and Journalism that has trained so many people who are practicing journalists, others are with NGOs, others are with other organizations, wouldn't have come into existence. So anger is something good. Because even in the scriptures, the Holy Bible, at a point in time, Jesus Christ became angry when he went to the temple at Jerusalem and he saw that people were selling and buying in the temple. He whipped them. So it's not a bad thing to be angry, but how you would turn or you manipulate the anger is what makes it negative or positive. Uh, I know even uh, Prophet uh, Muhammad, uh, uh, there, there's always something you say to it. Uh, pardon me if I'm not able to, to say that. Uh, it says in the Hadith that maltreatment of slaves was not good when he saw that some people were maltreating slaves, maltreating people because they were slaves, he became angry. The point I want to make is that these two personalities that we follow at the point in time were angry, but their anger was on a positive note. So it is not wrong when you become angry, but make sure you turn the anger into something positive. It is on this note that I want to share with everybody here that there are certain things that have brought me this far. And I want to share just about five or six with you, then I'll be done. The first thing is determination. Determination. Now, one needs to be highly motivated in whatever that you do. Be relentless in whatever that you do. And know that 
you are heading towards something. Don't expect anybody to encourage you. Don't expect anybody to praise you. Don't expect anybody to, to tell you to move forward. It is not everybody that will do that. But the most important thing is self-determination. You have set your goal. You know the vision. You are traveling. You are the only person who knows your destination. You, if I get up today and I get to the station and I know that I am going to Kumasi, when I get to the station, people will run to me. Yeah, bolga, 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 akra, 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 akra. But I will never enter any of those vehicles because they do not know where I'm going. I will only go and then board the bus that is going to Kumasi. Why? Because I'm the only person who knows my destination. Search his life. Get determined. Get focused. Move ahead. Don't be distracted by those who will call you. Come and enter this bus. Accra. Come and most of them or some of them will derail you. So one thing I want to share with you or to tell you that get determination. And it comes with hard work and dedication and perseverance if you'll be able to achieve your goals. The next one I want to share with you is resilience. In fact, I will, if I was not resilient, I would have given up on the way because throughout the journey, nobody motivated me. Throughout the journey, there were obstacles. There were issues where I had to use my own resources to, 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 to do, to perform certain things that I was supposed to do for others to benefit, but I never gave up. So be prepared to bounce back from setbacks, failures, and adversities. Look at the challenges and then see what opportunities are there in those challenges. That is the most important thing. The challenges will come. I premise my uh, speech with the fact that there are the road, the, the life is, gen, is a journey and the road is rough potholes, mountains, valleys, and you will cross them. You will climb, tones. Yes, those are the challenges. Those are the challenges. But always see something positive from the challenges. Do not complain. People complain. If you complain, you, would, you won't get to where you are going. Stop complaining and ask yourself, what can I make out of this? What positive thing can I make out of this? And I think if you ask yourself, those questions, you'll be able to make a headway. The third one is discipline and consistency. Keep doing what you are doing and improve upon it. Be consistent and discipline yourself. You need to adhere to strict routines, your habits, certain practices that will support your goals. Keep doing them. At a point in time when it seems not to be working, keep doing out of self-motivation, then when this thing happens, you'll be able to, to get to your destination. So discipline yourself. Huh. And then if you're able to do that, discipline yourself, and you keep doing it consistently. Um, one time I was driving, I was going to Kumasi. Then uh, I was not speeding. I think I uh, just around 100 kilometers per hour. But I was very consistent. Then as I was going, uh, uh, another vehicle, uh, I think that was V8 or so, came and then overtook me. But the vehicle made stop over several on the way. But I never stopped. I moved at 100 and I was consistent. And so I tell you, I got to Techiman and stopped about 30 minutes before the, car, the other car got there. That is consistency. Keep doing what you are doing repeatedly. And, and that is why politicians are even uh, using, you see, they would, they would keep telling you the wrong thing. And because of the consistency in which they say it, finally, it will become as if it is right. That is the power of consistency. So be consistent in whatever that you are doing. Just keep going. And I think you would get there. Self-belief and confidence is another thing. Have confidence in yourself and believe in yourself. Believe in yourself. Know that there is something good in you. And that's something that is in you. When it comes out, it will blossom. So you need to have 
and unwavering confidence and then believe in your abilities. You can do it. Why do you keep discouraging yourself that you cannot do it? Let me tell you, when I started this media school, I had friends and colleagues calling to tell me that it will not work because others started it. It didn't work. There was a time I introduced a uniform because I realized that the people needed, the students that were coming were from the hinterlands and they didn't know much about dressing. And being a media person, grooming is one of the things. So I introduced that uniform. People called me and lambasted me that it is a tertiary institution. Why should they wear uniform? And, but I never gave up. I said, whether you like or not, they will wear uniform. Today, Today, they are praised out of the uniform that they wear. When you see them, people think they are lawyers. They go for programs and people ask, where, where are these people coming from? So have that self-confidence in yourself and then believe in what you are doing. And if you believe in what you are doing, let me tell you, you would get there. Trust in your skills, the knowledge that you have, your instincts, have all of them, but remember to welcome criticisms. Welcome them. Sit down, analyze those criticisms that come. Pick out the constructive ones. Throw the rest away and then build on it. The positive ones, the constructive ones. And let me tell you, I, I do tell people, I told my students some few days ago that um, as a human being, if you want to move forward in life, always welcome enemies. And so I want to tell you, those listening to me today, look, if you don't have enemies, go and make enemies. Go and, go and welcome enemies because it is the height. They will make you uncomfortable where you are. And so you will begin to think out of the box. If your enemies are not there, you will feel very comfortable. You will think everything is okay, and people will ride past you. So look, I like enemies. I welcome them. I don't, I don't argue with them. Whatever that they do, directly or indirectly, I look at it, and out of that, I am motivated to move forward. So enemies, I say, they are the marketing managers of our lives. Enemies are our marketing managers. They market us. They tell our stories to people who don't know us for free, and we don't pay for that advert. <laughs> we don't pay for that advert. So don't begrudge your enemies. Don't hate anybody, but rather see what you can pick out of that, and then you would move forward. The last thing I want to share with you is that wherever that you are and whatever you are doing, remember that you are a leader and believe in teamwork. Remember you are a leader. Don't, don't expect somebody to call you and tell you that you are this before you know you are a leader. I'm not talking about the leadership where you, they, they, they will vote for you or you are in an institution and they, they pick you and say, oh, you are the leader of the class. No. You see, you are a leader wherever that you are. Whether people see you as a leader or not, you are a leader. And immediately you begin to recognize that fact you are going to grow. And if you know that you are a leader, you know how to work with people, you know how to respect people, you know how to speak with people, you know how to address people, you know how to interact with people because you know you are a leader. A leader inspires and motivates others to excel. So that should be one of the things. There are times that you yourself, you know that you are down-spirited and someone is also down-spirited you would downplay yours and begin to motivate the person. That is the leader. There are times that people would uh, come to me, uh, looking at me, and they think that, oh, this guy probably he can get me some 200, 500. And I tell you, at that moment, I would have nothing with me. Then I would find a way to settle that person. Though I am suffering the last penny, I'll give it to the person. That is the mark of a leader. So wherever you are, you are a leader. Be very humble and respect people. And I think with all these qualities, if you're able to put them together, you'll be able to become a champion in life.
So on this note, I want to end by saying that life is not easy. Don't expect everything on the silver platter. Today, IBM NJ has grown. We have a center in Yendi, and people are even calling us from other places that we should come and start a center there. Why is it so? It is because of the determination and the focus that we have. Thank you very much, and God bless you. I know uh, there are other people on the line, and we are going to learn a lot. And thank you very much, uh, Mr. Confidence. I call him Mr. Confidence. Uh, those on this platform, please forgive me if I call him Confidence. <laughs> yes, because his first book, we adopted it in our school and we use it. That is the confidence speaker. So we still call him Confidence. So thank you very much and God bless you. And uh, I think Mr. Mustafa will make my number available. Anybody that wants to get in touch with me, you feel free and then do that. Have great, a great time. Great. Thank you very much for this wonderful presentation. Thank you. Uh, I've never seen you supercharged like this. Today is a different ball game altogether. Thank you for the inspiration. And this is what we want. We are created, creating our own TED Talks. Stories worth sharing. But if you are here, know that you are not alone. Know that there are a lot of people, what you are going through, People have gone through that and they are making progress. Thank you very much, Mr. Chas, for honoring this. And uh, just still be around. We'll have questions from some of the people who are here and uh, to also take your wisdom. And later in the program, we'll ask for maybe your contact or how they can get to you and partner of your school. So believe in yourself. Those are the ideas. That you should believe in yourself. Have confidence in yourself. Keep pushing and keep moving. And I love this part. Make enemies. Because that is a free marketing tool for you. For people to market you whilst you are sleeping. People to market you whilst you are doing great things. Even when you are failing, people will market and inspire you. And that is your enemy. And those are your enemies. Yes. Yes. Alima uh, is saying that Mr. Chas is a resilient, selfless, focus on the goal and his strong leadership skills. Great. And uh, thank you very much. So now we are here and we are about to speak to or listen to our only sister, Sister One. She has created a company, an organization, and she's pushing the buttons. She's moving beyond the limits and she's taking creating more opportunities using the power of multimedia. She's the founder of Illucrate Multimedia, a young lady breaking boundaries, working for uh, co uh, big organizations like mining companies, working for organizations, tailoring and bringing their stories into life. Let's welcome Stephanie, AKA Ibrahim. Welcome Stephanie. Thank you, Mr. Mustafa. Thank you, Mr. Ibrahim, for the invitation to speak at um, your summit. Um, I, I want to share a presentation. I want to share my screen. Okay, Maybe. that's fine. Okay, so I think you can share now. Okay. Um, Great. You can see that one. Yes. So once again, thank you, Mr. Ibrahim, for... The invitation to speak um, and I'm honored to be with you today as we delve into a topic that resonates with every journey, every individual and every industry, innovate or stagnate, thriving in a rapidly changing world. That's my selected topic. Um, today I want to take you on a journey, one that is personal to me since it's the journey I found myself on and I'm still embarking. It's from the beginning when I realized there was something I wanted to achieve. And in my case, the entrepreneurship journey. For others, it could be your career progress in your workplace or even your journey as a student towards eventually graduating. However, in this age where social media and technological advancements have come to stay and become a thriving area for growth and development, there are many who have delved into business, which has become simpler to market from buy and sell, makeup, photography, amongst many. I believe and hope my journey may speak to you even to the barest minimum. 
So I'll begin by introducing myself. My name is Stephanie Ibrahim, as Mr. Ibrahim mentioned earlier. I'm a visual storyteller with a decade of professional experience and an expertise running through all the stages of media production. I'm a certified camera woman skilled in the usage of photography, professional photography and cinematography equipment, including post-production tools. I lead a team of qualified professionals in the media space to tell the stories of individuals, brands, and anyone where we delve, uh, we deliver excellent results. Before I began my entrepreneurship journey, I was a student with many hobbies, including photography. I wanted to build a career from this passion, which inspired my decision to start a business. If I had not embarked on this path, I would never have known what was possible. This was a risk, but I have no regrets. So this brings us back to my selected topic, innovate or stagnate, thriving in a rapidly changing world. I'll be highlighting and using my personal journey as a case study in just six points. So my first point is setting the stage, the reality of change. Change is the law of life and those who look onto the past or present are certain to miss the future. Only to the past or present are certain to miss the future. This is a quote from John F. Kennedy. Change is constant. Embrace it in your entrepreneurship, career, or studies. So let's acknowledge the undeniable truth. Change is constant. In this era of rapid transformation, whether we embrace innovation or resist it, change will happen. It's not a matter of if, but when. Over a decade ago, as a student dreaming of owning my own business, I studied and worked as a camera woman. Being a student of the National Film and Television Institute, you are exposed to every aspect of media production, including your specialized course. I aimed not just to tell stories, but to stand between the client and the product, ultimately being the CEO. I had to earn my role, although it was easy to just call myself that. Almost every entrepreneur calls themselves CEO. I was gradually building the ethics of a crew and team member learning on the field. It was the beginning of my journey. Then my next point is embracing the unknown, a playground for innovation. The only way to do great work is to love what you do. If you haven't found it yet, keep looking. Don't settle, a quote by Steve Jobs. See uncertainty as a playground for innovation. Be versatile. The unknown can be difficult to deal with, but it's also where innovation flourishes. Think of it as a playground for creativity. Instead of fearing uncertainty, view it as a canvas waiting for the strokes of your ideas to paint a new vibrant picture. Embracing opportunities in unexpected places, such as the mining industry, became the foundation for my business. Working on every level from accountant, business manager, editor, graphic designer, PR personnel, amongst many, pushed me beyond my comfort zone. You don't have, I mean, you don't make so much if you hire all these personnels anyway. I mean, you can't hire all these personnels anyway. So I'll move to my next point, which is the power of adaptability. It's not the strongest of species that survive, nor the most intelligent, but the one most responsive to change, a quote by Charles Darwin. Adaptability is key. Turn challenges into opportunities. So adaptability is the cornerstone of thriving amidst change. It's not about merely weathering the storm, it's about learning to dance in the rain. Each shift, challenge or obstacle is an opportunity to adapt and grow. It fuels, it's the foil that propels us forward. I had to decline job offers and putting all my efforts into building my clientele came with pain and tears. This was a big risk I took. Entrepreneurial journey demands constant adaptation and unyielding focus on the dream. Learning from setbacks building resilience. I have not failed. I've just found 10,000 ways that won't work. Thomas A. Edison made this quote. 
Failures are stepping stones. Don't give up. Keep learning. Setbacks are not roadblocks. They are stepping stones. Every stumble, every failure is a lesson waiting to be learned. Embracing the mindset, this mindset builds resilience, turning adversity into a catalyst for growth. Learning from setbacks and building resilience is vital in the entrepreneurial journey and a great way to avoid failure. It's all part of the journey. You are just learning how to do what others did before you, which only means it's possible. Every challenge is an opportunity to learn and grow, preventing failure. My fifth point, collaboration, a force multiplier for innovation. Alone, we can do so little. Together, we can do so much, Helen Keller. Collaboration boosts innovation. Collaborate with diverse minds for creative solutions. None of us exist in isolation. Collaboration amplifies innovation. When diverse minds converge, magic happens. Together, we can create solutions and ideas that transcend individual capacities. Collaboration is our force multiplier. It goes beyond direct business partnership. Working effectively with teams, clients, and mentors is essential and are forms of collaboration. We all need to put, or we all need people to thrive in whatever journey we choose to embark on, from making friends, having mentors, relationships, or partnerships, and being inspired by sharing ideas and growing together. We rise by lifting others, creating a network that encourages growth. My last point, continuous improvement. It's not that I'm so smart, it's just that I stay with problems longer, a quote by Albert Einstein. Cultivate an innovation mindset, always question and improve. Innovation is not a one-time event, it's a continuous process. Cultivate the innovation mindset. Always question, iterate, and improve. The quest for improvement keeps us on the cutting edge of progress. I have never actually had a specific location to call my workplace, but now I do. This you will see on the current slide. Um, it's still work in progress. You would also see my journey so far previewing some brands I have worked with or for. Gradually building my own workspace after working from inconvenient and uncomfortable locations signifies continuous improvement to me. This instills confidence and pride in me, pushing me to believe that what I'm doing is working and in the endless possibilities ahead. The only way to do great work is to love what you do. If you haven't found it yet, keep looking, don't settle. Another quote by Steve Jobs. As we continue or as we navigate this ever evolving world, remember this, innovation isn't reserved for a selected few. It's a collective power within each of us. Embrace change, adapt resilience, collaborate with purpose and foster the mindset of continuous improvement. Together, we can not only survive, but thrive in this rapidly changing world. So let's go out there and innovate because in innovation lies our path, not just to survival, but to unparalleled success and fulfillment. Um, I would like to thank Mr. Ibrahim once again for allowing me to speak about my journey um, to the audience here. And I'm thankful for you listening to me. Um, here's my contact details and my location um, on this slide. And thank you. Wow. Thank you. Wow. Thank you very much, Stephanie Ibrahim. Uh, thank you. Founder of Illucrate Multimedia. And thank you for your uh, wonderful presentation. So these are people who are putting Africa in the map. They are putting their communities on the global space and listening to them will just inspire you to do something, to create change and to believe and to push beyond what you think you can't even achieve. So just be poised. If you have questions, jot them down. I can see Salat, Salat Abubakar. I can see Raha, uh, Zakaria, Mo Obarik, 
uh, Awudu, Obarika, I can see Fushini Danjuma, Dangoma, I can see Hilma Mupolo, I am man, Avugu, Wedam, Caesar. I know that this is going to be a um, uh, Alima. This is our sleeve, maybe from Paga site. <laughs> right. So Alima says that from strength, strength of a woman. That's powerful. Peruza, Peruza to just welcome. We have Abdul Raf, Abigail. And uh, so this is from our only sister, Stephanie Ibrahim. We will take whatever she has presented on and we can ask her questions. Now, let's move on to the next chapter. We have one of our sisters too coming up. And uh, when you hear about, she's also into digital storytelling. So she says a storyteller with a technical eye and a heart for community. And uh, when you hear Ninth March Studios Limited, right? One name that rings in your bell is Najlao Dramanu, Najibab Ata AK. So let's welcome our sister. Our only and only sister. Our only and only. And uh, Naj, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Right. Ivy, thank you very much. Right. So I'm going to start by pronouncing my full name. It's Najlao Dramundu Ata Adokarim. It's quite a, ham a mouthful, so you can just say Najiba for short. <laughs> Great. Good. So the and floor of, is yours. Yeah, and of course, um, I mean, I guess to remind you guys or inform you guys that Nicki Minaj is on tour, just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you very much for inviting me um, here to this summit, um, Champion Summit. That's really interesting. And you, I mean, I'm going to share my story. So I was thinking about it. If I'm going to share a story on the Champions Summit, what's the best way to go about it than um, sharing my story, which is uh, I, the overcoming ad adversity because I'm a filmmaker. I always uh, relate everything of mine to troops. So my story is more of like an overcoming adversity type of story, which is very relatable to a lot of young people that are starting out or trying to like get into maybe a similar space that I'm in or maybe the same, the same space. Uh, before I start, I'll just have to say, um, I'm very proud of um, uh, Stephanie because she was my senior in school and she's one of the people that I always looked up to and She's she's an inspiration. She's done so well for herself. So um, my overcoming adversity story, I'm going to say is about breaking out and then standing firm on what you decided to do and pers keep to keep pursuing it. I'm going to start with, I'm going to break my story into errors and I'm going to be, uh, I talk very fast, so I'm going to try and slow it down and walk us through the errors that I have been through and the significant things that I have learned from each and every era. So I'm gonna start with my, the era I always called the GSS era. It would be very surprising if I tell somebody that I was once very, very shy and I had, very, I had a very low inferiority complex and I couldn't speak in the midst of people. Yes, that was my reality back in junior high school. It's not because I wasn't brilliant. I was. I used to be in groups that were doing literature stuff. I would always write the script, and then somebody else would have to go and stand in front of the class and present and see if it's DS. And I'll they'd take all the accolades. I just sit behind and I'll be happy with what I get. This was because simply because I didn't have the confidence to um, face people and talk. So what happened was when I went to um, senior high school, I remember one day, the day that changed my life was I was sitting in a debaters, writing debaters club meeting as a first year student and we're preparing for T.I. Ahmadiyya Senior High School's uh, 60th anniversary. Then the literature, the patron of the club was like, was sharing out sprint, scripts for a drama. And then everybody, all the popular kids in the class took out their scripts and the stuff like that. And I was sitting there at the back alone and this guy was like, you, come here. The, the narrator role, who is taking it? Nobody was taking narrator. He called me, you, come here, come and take it, read. 
when I took it, he asked me, oh, you can't, you don't know how to read. Something shifted in me when he asked me whether I don't know how to read. Then I read it. Then he said, ah, you've done well. So go back, learn it, and come back and read, read it to me t t t tomorrow. And that was the end of me not being able to stand in front of people. Because the next day, that night, I stayed on, I stayed overnight. And I, 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 I memorized the whole script. And when I came back, I, I, I recited it. And then it was like, brilliant, keep improving. And that was how, on the 60th anniversary of Tiamat in High School, I moved from being shy to standing in front of over a thousand, I think I, I think it's fair to say like a thousand people to narrate the epilogue and the, the prologue and the epilogue for the drama that happened on that day. And that significantly changed my life because from that moment, I wasn't at the back seat anymore. I moved to the middle where I was now taking part of things. So if you are in, if you think, if you have, if you feel like you have a lot of potential, but then there's just something, that one thing drawing you. I'm just going to tell you that all you need is that one act of courage, that one push that you push yourself that would transform your whole life. And this is something that I've always done with people around me. Anytime I feel like they are in the same, they were in, they are in the same space I was at when I was in junior high school. So, but that brought the end of the, um, the shy era. And then I was, I went into my breaking out era where I started doing things. Eventually I was leading in leadership positions. I was leading clubs and stuff like that. I left senior high school with about 11 um, sports and executive positions across all the things in the, um, all the clubs in the school. And I wasn't a bad student. I was always top of my class. Well, I was a visual art student. So basically this is, it was with this type of like when I once I I I I I I broke out, I felt like I didn't need to like hold back in again. I was giving everything out. I was calling people. I remember I felt like I wanted to do film. I started calling people. One of the people that I called eventually taught me nafti. I called them and I was asking them about film and stuff like that. Because I made a vow to myself when I was in junior high school that when I go to Kumasi, I'll meet um I'll meet um producers and the best way to do was at that time I went to Google and I searched producers in Ghana and I had a list of names one significant name was Mr. Boachi he didn't pick my call then only for me to meet him in after and I was like hey Mr. Boachi there was a time like I called you when I was a kid in senior high school and then you didn't pick my call so he became quite fan of me and then I was actually I loved this class he was teaching script writing so this basically also tells you that at every point in time, whenever you discover what you want to do, you should be able to research on it, research on the resources available for you to reach your, put, um, your, your target. You should not sit back and wait for things to happen to you. You should be able to reach out and then pave way for yourself. Because I was, I was in Sakasaka. I didn't know anybody in Kumasi. I also obviously didn't know anybody in Accra. But once I started to search on Facebook, search on Google and find people, I started networking my way. And then that's how I found myself into NAFTI. So I went to NAFTI. I studied film. I was done. I did that. That's it. When I was out of school, there was only two choices for me. It's either I get um, go back to school or I get um, continue education or I, I, I get a job in, in a studio. But I was, I trained as an animator and there was just uh, a very few studios. Even though I had offers there, I wasn't really feeling it. So I decided, I was like, okay. At that time, I also had something. Um, I knew that the legendary Walt Disney started his um, company at a very young age. And when he started, he didn't know, he didn't have everything figured out. So I said, okay, I also want to start my company. I went to, uh, I remember going from Accra to Garu. Uh, it, was a, it was a road trip with my team. At that time, I had a team of collaborators. We were not a company, but just a team of collaborators. I remember going from um, Accra to Garu to work on a project, uh, uh, obstetric fistula project. And on our way back, I was like, yo, guys, what if we actually start a company? That was just it. We were like, we, we, we left it there. We didn't even discuss it. When we got back to Accra, we had KFC talking and we're, we're talking about a project we're going to do, another project that we're going to do. 
And I was like, wait, you guys, let's not start this project as, let's not do this project as collaborators anymore. Let's start a company. So that happened on 9th March, 2019. That conversation happened on 9th March, 2019. So we were like, okay, then what would you call the company? We're like, the, the, my other guy was like, what is today's day? I said, 9th March, I said, that's the name of our company. So that's how come we started our company, 9th March. We did, you see? Even though I, we didn't put a lot of um, work in it, but the thought of it, the whole coming out together of the company made it something. It was something that we 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 sipped a bit of ourselves into it. So we decided that we were going to make this company big. People are gonna hear about this company. And we started. When we started, what were we doing? We're shooting wedding videos and a little bit of animation jobs because animation wasn't coming like that. Then eventually. We stopped we're shooting wedding videos because more jobs were coming. So we stopped shooting more, more, more wedding videos. And then we had more people on board. So we're training and training. But COVID happened. We're training and training people till December. COVID happened. When COVID happened, I had an issue with my co-founder. And then we had to split the company. I mean, we had to split. So uh, they left the company and we had a deal. I'm not going to disclose that. But we had a deal which meant they went with almost half of what actually made up the company. And with or without that aspect of the company, the company wouldn't stand the way it was. So we had to now move to a next stage, which was restructuring. And in this stage, I mean, I, I actually, for a whole one month, I thought of giving up the company because, wait, what was my next step? This was a, the idea. This is the job we're doing and we started the company. So we restructured and then we started working. So this also says um, you always have to have a plan A, B, C, D, E, F, because all those plans can fail. And if you have a Z plan, it would work for you. So we ended up um, we ended up getting through with this uh, this new uh, this new restructuring business, and then we started applying for programs. We started doing, this time around, it was different. Our mindset was different. If at first we aimed at Ghana and we failed, we are now aiming global. So if we fail again, at least we might not fall on the floor. We'll fall in Ghana. So before in 2019, when I started a company with my co-founder, we were aiming Ghana. Then after 2019, we were, after 2020, when they left, and then we started, we restructured the company. And I brought in new people. We're now aiming for on a global space. And what this made, meant was that we're now actually we've got opportunity to play outside Ghana. And that totally changed everything for us. So again, it's not too much. It's, <laughs> it's again, if you aim like for 5,000 and you don't get it, aim for 50,000. If you don't get 50,000, at least you get 6,000. If the 50,000, you don't get it, aim for 500,000. If you don't get 500,000, you get 100,000. And that was that's my mentality towards this. So the more we fail, the more the higher we aim for the company. And eventually, uh, we were able to um, get into a lot of programs that put us on an international space and opened our eyes to the real realities of film in the world. And there's real possibilities of what we can do with film. And so currently, one thing that I'm currently doing, so when I got an opportunity to visit a lot of like foreign studios and see exactly what was happening, I had to come back again and restructure. I remember you never stop restructuring. I had to come back again and restructure. And now we are running an animation lab where we get to uh, train animators. And so again, if you are in this call, uh, in this, I mean, if you are listening and then you have, you know, someone or you yourself uh, is interested in animation, you can also partake in the animation lab. It's called the Ninth Lab, and uh, it's run. It's, it runs for six months, and then you get to do one year internship, paid internship actually, because animation has money. So that's just uh, by the way. So yeah, I mean, when we went to get the exposure, we decided to start a lab where we get to actually now train people that are collaborators because that's one of the reason why I love. Um, I love this uh, topic when uh, Mr. Ibrahim gave it to me because he said innovation and collaboration. When we went, we had to innovate a way to be able to achieve 
what we want to do, that is to play on the international space. And the only way is to make sure that you can create or you can create a space where people can seamlessly collaborate with each other. And for me, that has always been my goal, to be able to seamlessly collaborate with people. Before then, I was still collaborating, but in process, like this one finishes this process and move. But now I want to have in-process collaborations. And that's why we started a lab where we can now train people. And my target is that by the end of this year, I should have, uh, I should have close to 20 uh, animators that can actually pick up from where the other um, leaves when they are working. And then you will never notice that two or three animators worked on that project. Or if you not, never notice that 10 animators worked on that project. So again, I mean, for me, if you are listening, my journey, like I said, is overcoming adversities. Throughout the journey, there has been so many adversities for me having inferiority complex, to me starting a team, and everything that I have ever done, I have bootstrapped. I have never received any investment. When I was starting out, I didn't receive any investment from somewhere until I got to a place where I was, uh, I could take grants and then I could get investors to invest in the project. When I started, I bootstrapped throughout. So it also tells you that you, like uh, Mr. Charles and then um, Stephanie said, you always need to be determined and resilient. It's very, very important. And then at the end of the day, you should be able to be innovative because now everything is changing in the world. So if you're not innovative, your old ways would be archaic and people will not be able, you lose your crowd. That's basically it. So yeah, um, Mr. Ibrahim, I think uh, I'll bring it to an end. I mean, my story is all is just about overcoming adversity. And then I'm just telling you about uh, me breaking out and then standing firm and the things that helped me to be able to break 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 uh break out and then stand firm and finally i just have to say that as a leader there's only one thing there's mr um charles mentioned a lot of the ingredients that you needed to be a leader but i didn't hear assertiveness because being assertive well i think he actually said it when he said when you go to the the market the car and then they um, go to the transport station and then the cars are going, you know where you are going to. And when they are announcing other cars going to other, you know, destinations or locations. But I feel like assertiveness is very important if you are, if you are aimed towards a goal. No matter how determined you are, if you are not assertive in your decisions, if you do not believe in yourself, sometimes you 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 you, you doubt yourself. And doubting yourself is one of the things that brings like a down that 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 leads to the down, downfall of a lot of um entrepreneurs because then you begin to have an imposter syndrome and you it's it comes with a lot of issues. So um I'll bring this one and thank you very much, Mr. Brian. Much thank you for this. Thank you for this inspiration. And uh it's quite interesting to see the synopsis of your journey from where you started from being shy from taking up the stage just a comment from someone telling you that you can't read and uh that has sparked that direction in whatever you do now so thank you very much for that so uh we have our auntie i don't know whether the network is now good and uh if you are here, let me go to see. So we try on the network. And one of the things that we need to work as young Africans is the network. So we have a, a lot of stuff. When I do, there are different programs I do. When I'm doing it to like other places, other like different countries, the network never fails. But once we come here, so we need to invest uh, people, the telecos need to do well so that we can also get seamless internet to work with. Mo Barak, she's our next speaker. So if she's here, if you are here, you can just maybe show up, but the network is not allowing her to be here. So I'm just getting here. So uh, Asia, Alima, you are here. Maybe you can just say one or two words. And also raise up your hand if you have questions that you want to ask all the great speakers. So you can just 
uh, ask them questions if you are here. But Alima, Haji Alima, Sagito. Yes. yes, yes, I'm here. Great, great. Champion yes. Summit, another. Good afternoon, Ibrahim and the team. Another champion summit that you have put together, and then uh, we're very great young speakers as usual. I just want to continue to appreciate the effort you put in. Anytime you want to make sure that young people are encouraging each other. I think uh, this platform that you have established is nothing but to make sure that uh, young people believe in themselves. And like the last speaker just said, and be very assertive and, and, and aim to achieve. I think that's just what I want to say, than to say that they are doing very well. Everybody should be proud of themselves and continue to be proud as usual. Continue to know that whatever they are doing, people are really also looking up to them. That time we're growing, if we had this opportunity, I think we would have been far ahead. And I'm loving the fact that they've seen opportunity and they are really taking it. And what you are doing is to coordinate that opportunity for them. And so all the speakers, bravo to you. And I also wish you happy International Women's Day that is coming. And then as usual, the inclusivity, if you look at the team that the year is uh, working on, it is a team that already, I'm sure a lot of the agent leads, but I could see that uh, the discussions are centered around issues of inclusion, which is very good and also issues of uh, investment in ourselves. So all of you, congratulations for accepting to always share your knowledge. And for this young person, I think that anywhere you go, people you will move people because your story is so impactful. It's change making and it's also sustainable. It's very resilient. And I think that uh, we are very proud of you as uh, those of us from the North and especially Ibrahim also. So thank you for the opportunity to add my voice and continue to encourage young people. You, Mama G herself, and she has always been supportive. And there's no youth program that you will go and uh, you will not, never find Haji Alima supporting. So more, uh, more tribe shop, if you are here and uh, if you work on the internet, you can uh, still. Mubarika, I will do. She's a great entrepreneur. So if you are here, finally, she's having problems with her network, and uh, but she's here. She's in the house. So if you can, if you can hear this, you can. Okay. So if you can hear this, you can just start your presentation. Okay. Thank great. you very much. Welcome. Um, Welcome. I hope I'm audible. Yes, you are, you are. Okay, so thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. As he's so much problem with my internet, I drove in my whole area just to get internet to join this because I really, really wanted to have the opportunity to speak on the events. And finally, I had to go to a school library where I am currently just so I could be on the program. So you see how important this event is for me. Okay, so as he has uh, introduced me, my name is Mbarika Audu, and I'm a founder of uh, Zelcon Ghana Limited and also Mo Tribe, a uh, fashion brand. Uh, Zelcon is an IT firm and Mo Tribe is a fashion. So you see the contrast. That is what entrepreneurship does to one person. Like you can choose to go two different directions. Okay, I would, for me, I would like to share, I think uh, I would like to commend most of the speakers. It always gives you opportunity to hear stories from like minds. Our stories and our journeys have similarities. I think uh, all of it is all about perseverance and persistence and doing what you want to do and the ability to do it regardless of all the challenges that we face. My story is not different from all these wonderful uh, speakers who have spoken before me. I believe in one thing, that entrepreneurship is either by birth or 
as brainless. Some people also learn it. For me, I see myself as a born entrepreneur because I didn't know I was an entrepreneur so I knew what an entrepreneur was. Then I knew I was an entrepreneur before even I knew I was one. As a child, I also want, I always wanted to solve a problem. And the main problem I'd wanted to solve when I was a child, I say child because it was like, I was like eight years or seven, something like that, was the fact that I don't go and ask for money or I'm able to help the house when they needed money. That was what I wanted to solve. I didn't like the fact that when I needed something, I had to go and ask. And then my mother said she didn't have, and I was like, I'm helpless. So what can I do? So I, there was a lady who was selling, um, she makes this condensed milk. And I was like, okay, I could also learn how to make the condensed milk, but I didn't know how to tell her that. So I, so I, um, Went to say her and told her that I offered myself to assist her by fanning her fire for her. But I went there to learn, but I couldn't just see it. So that's how I started. Why did I want to fan her fire? It's because I wanted to learn how to do that so that I'll be able to sell it to my friends in school and make money to support my family. So that's how I started. So I did that. And then I added other stuff like needle. So before I could get to class four, I was already selling things in school and making money and supporting my family. So that one, I wasn't trained. I was something that I was born to. Yeah, it was really, we all were to have a TV in my, our neighborhood. So it was quite easy to get the kids to come. So I supported myself through that. So along the line, I knew that I, I wanted to be on my own in terms of business wise. I want to go and apply for a job. So when I was in school, I was with And when I was there, I also started recruiting other people to do marketing for the modeling agencies. So as, as I was growing, I was coming up with different ideas and different concepts of how to build my dream of being. As I grew, it became like I want employment. So my friends in school who did it, I come and give them contract and get comments from it. So these are the traits that exhibit. I did I and I did marketing. So after my national service, I didn't have the capital of an IT firm. Neither do I have um, much experience, but I went to work with a company for a year so that I could make the money uh, for to start my own business. How I went to work for that company is a story for another day because we don't have much time here. I just want to you to understand the power of entrepreneurship. When you are an entrepreneur, you don't ask how I don't have money. You don't ask how do I get money. You find ways of making your own money to solve the problem that you think you want to solve. So that passion drives us as entrepreneurs to do what you want. they need money to start something. I just think that, okay, this person does not want to do this thing at all. Because I want to talk about another thing is how to start business without capital, which is very, very easy. When all these uh, other presenters were talking, none of them spoke about the fact that they didn't have money to do anything. They went out, used their connections, used their, used their intellects, intellects, and also used their passion to start whatever business it is that they start, they've started now.
when I started my IT firm, after I'd worked for a year, there was a contract. My boss said I didn't have any proof of contract, which I didn't take in a contract after the contract. I still went I and left the business, the company, to start my business. I didn't have money. But I knew I can do what I'm doing. So I went out to talk to companies. One, I know business also. I know there are companies that have the products that I need. So I went out to look for the contracts, contacted from my experience of marketing, contacted some banks and enterprise insurance enterprises, send them proposals and told them what I can do, the kind of service, IT services I can give them. When they gave me the contract, I didn't have the money. I went to look for IT solution companies and told them I have this contract. Can you give me this credit line so that I could execute it and give me a time to pay? It wasn't easy, but one company said yes, because when I didn't have collateral, they don't know me. I'm some small girl skinny coming to say that I have this contract. I want to execute. How do you need know that I could execute and give them back their money? But I didn't give up. So one after visiting more than 20 companies, one said yes. And that was the breakthrough. I got the contract, I executed it, and I was paid. And then I gave them back their money. So that is the seed money that I started building my businesses with. Then it's open other doors. So the ability to be confident. One lady said she was very shy. I was very shy. When I met Ibrahim, I said, I am very shy. Every time I, I talk to people, I am very shy. But I have this uh something that it's, I have this aura on my face. People see me, the moment they see me, they think I can do something. People believe in me. I go to places and then I am asked to speak. But I am scared of standing in front of people to talk. Even in school, when they want to elect class preferred or school preferred, I will never participate, but they will always come and choose me. So I asked him, how do you overcome that? And he said, you don't overcome it. You build upon it. That was what Mr. Ibrahim told me. As I'm talking to you guys, I can't see you here, but I'm shaky, you know. So that is it. But I look, I, 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 I am shy, but I am confident because I believe in myself. I believe that I can do it. I don't know how to say no to things that I want to do. So along the line, I wanted to start another business, which is the fashion business that's also for another story but how to start a business with no income no vital is very possible or minimal how do you do that it's all about partnership this lady said she's uh two of the ladies are into media and production as i'm sitting here now i can say okay uh these two ladies are into media okay why don't we come together and start a youtube channel that can give us money isn't it i don't need to know how to make the production she does maybe i am good at marketing so we can come together and partner and start a production. And Mr. Ibrahim is here. He can give us tips on how to do this thing. So you see, being an entrepreneur is looking for solution, not really looking for the money, but out of the solution, then the money comes. Facebook and all the other social networks that we're using on, none of them started because they said, oh, I wanted to be rich. So on even all Steve Jobs, they all didn't start because they wanted to be rich. They saw a problem they wanted to solve. They saw an opportunity they wanted to tap in and it has generated into millions. So we can all do this thing. It's all about, it's, in our, it's all in our mind. It's not easy as we are sitting here narrating it so beautifully and smoothly, but it's not easy. It's very difficult. Sometimes you feel like quitting. Even last week, I felt, I felt like quitting. But you look at what where you have come from and where you are going. When you look at where you have come from, you will see that, oh, you have really done well. You bath yourself, probably buy yourself a first class ticket to some destination and relax, cool off and come back and start again. 
But if you only look at where you you want to see what, with the people that are ahead of you, it's very depressing when you're looking at people who are ahead of you. But you have to look at, you have to keep the balance. Look at where you are coming from and congratulate yourself and look at where you want to, where to, uh, where you want to go to motivate you that you can get there. So we all need these two balance in our lives. The power of cooperation and partnership, I've said that already, but it's something that we can all come together. Mr. Ibrahim did not know us, but he did. He was not scared. He sent us DMs, and then here we are today. And this is a channel that he has created. Now, these channels can be monetized. So in this era of IT and innovation, how are we broke as Africans? And we're all around looking for jobs that are not existing because we each and each one of us want to own whatever business that we have. We don't want to share, we don't want to partner. When there is partnership, also there is this greed. People really, um, when you partner with them, they steal your ideas and then cut you off. Those things are problems that are there. But we cannot give up on each other. We cannot give up on trying to partner together. I'm always open to partnership, sharing ideas, coming up with concepts and innovation. So if anyone is interested in us coming up with something else that can create jobs and also provide us security, why not? So I'll end here by saying thank you to uh, Mr. Ibrahim and thank you to all of you who have made time to be here. Thank you very much. Right. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. So on your screen, you will see the speakers and their yes, LinkedIn. I love LinkedIn because you can get real connections there. So you can see them. I'm just showcasing some of them. And uh, if you can see, so that's Mr. Charles Nudge and also uh, Sister who just finished. So great strides. And I love the aspect. And this just embodies the theme of whatever we are doing, collaboration, networks, and uh, creating opportunities for ourselves and making sure that we get what we want through collaborations, through networks, and through what we want to do. So, so this is very important. So check on the check on them on LinkedIn. Just type their names. And LinkedIn is so pure that once you check their names, you can get to see them. We have still have uh, one sister, uh, Mama G herself, Ali Mabawa. So I saw that you were back. Maybe you can just share one or two things of your experience and uh, all the things that you've done, uh, taking uh, uh, Cow Tribe to a level that it is today. I believe we can't even chalk the success of Car Tribe without mentioning your name. And uh, so she is a communications and engagement person, business development, project management, fundraising, board development, tech the impact for profit advocate. So if you are looking for all the services, she is someone who has mastered her game and she's done that well globally. So welcome, sister. So you just snitched on me. <laughs> um, I just came as a participant and, and not to share, but of course I feel um, quite motivated about what I have heard and most particularly listening to Mr. Charles, someone who has also contributed to my, my, my success today. I haven't prepared to say a word, but I just want to say as entrepreneurs, as people who aspire to lead generations, as people who intend to run their own businesses, if it is for profit, if it is for social good, it is fine. But we need to be intentional about what we want and pursue it regardless of the challenges. And then um, there is a fact that I think it is Mubaraka who just spoke. I joined in um, quite a few minutes now. And we can get all the resources that we need um, from people. We really do not need all the cash to start the business. And we need to be sincere and truthful about our challenges 
and reaching out to people who can partner to grow. Uh, many people at the moment fear to do partnerships because uh, when growth happens in businesses, then they begin to have founder challenges. But of course, you cannot run the race alone without partnership because you do not have all the skills to run a business. You do not have all the money to pay people to run the business for you from the onset. But you have resources around, you have people around, you have mentors around, and you have loads and loads of materials you can learn from online. And so I just want to say that we need to be sincere. And as women, we need to be particular about what we want. And we need to be intentional about the kind of relationships we want to build and seek help, especially trying to balance work, home, and relationship. You know, if you have kids, if you have a husband, um, if you have family to take care of, you have a business at the same time, you need to be sincere and intentional about how to reach out, ask for help, and delegate responsibilities instead of trying to do everything by yourself. This is what I just want to say. Thank you. Thank you very much for your words of wisdom. Uh, too soon, we are coming to the apex of the summit, but we still have interesting stuff. So if you have questions, you can ask them, but you can ask all the people that just raise up your hand, I'll bring you up to ask your question. But for now, uh, Nudge, maybe we, we get to see some of the videos that you have. If anyone has something to share, maybe we can just do that as we take the questions and we move on. I also equally have questions for the, all the speakers. So, Nash, Nash. Yeah, okay. So, uh, yeah, I, then I have a video to share. It's a teaser of my current project in production. It's titled Talata. Um, I'm going to share my screen. Can you see my screen? I see, I see. Okay, so let's go. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> okay, so okay. maybe okay. so what is it about? What is it about? Maybe just so that we know so when it's it coming. Yeah, so it's a teaser of the current project I'm working on. It's a feature. Oh, can you hear me still? Yes, we can. Okay. We can. Yeah, so it's a feature length animation about a young girl, um, three young girls who move from the village to the city to make a living. And then their struggles and whether they decide to stay there or come back home to innovate. So yeah, uh, is uh, Talata is currently under production and it's gonna, I don't have an exact release date, but I know that a short film on it, the sh a short film on it is coming in December. Wow. That's great. So when when once it is out, let's all know so that we can be part of that and uh, we can all support in our own small way. And uh, I can see a blend of traditions. I can see a blend of our drums. I love that. I love that. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. And it's That's also great. another interesting uh, collaborative piece because I was working with uh, sound engineers from Tamale. Okay. On this board. Yeah. Great. Great. Thank you for this achievement. So all too soon, we are here. And uh, the question I want to ask all the speakers is that you've all highlighted all the things that you've been doing. And uh, I love what uh, Mo Mubarak and uh, Ali Mabawa and all of you, what all you've shared. But has there been that moment where you feel like you wanted to give up? You were hard pressed and you feel like, I can't do this anymore. And how did you overcome that? That's my question. How did you overcome that? Because in entrepreneurship, every day you feel like giving up. Just why is it not possible? Sometimes I ask questions. Why is it not that easy? You just go out and get a job. They pay you and you are well to do. So has there been that time that you feel like giving up? And what motivated you to stay? Stephanie. Yes, Mr. Ibrahim. Um, well, I think there's always one particular point in your business. It could be yearly, it could be every two years or every three years. In my cases, I started a business almost maybe about eight to 10 years ago. I've had four specific points where I almost gave up. I'll highlight just one, which was the most recent one. Um, in my case, it was last year. Um, I found myself at a point where business became slow. I mean, as you grow and you keep upgrading yourself, your clients also are growing. They are finding newer ways to also make things easier for themselves, cheaper. In media production, um, everybody is trying to find cheaper ways to um, do their job. And in our case, media is expensive. So in my case, um, I needed to... Um, how do I say it? I needed to grow. And that's where I showed you pictures of my office. That's where I decided to invest into a space. I cleared my entire account to build up a space where I could um, expand. I think at those points, you need to expand. Najila mentioned something like that, that you cannot just be there at one place and expect things to um become better for you. So I needed to expand. And now I'm even into trainings. I train people on um, media production. I also, um, initially I didn't need to send out proposals. Business was based on recommendation, but I go out there and look for the business now. And it's, it's more like you must grow or things will just fall in business. You can't sit down at one place, no matter how good it looks, things are going to change. There are younger people that are coming to take away your job from you. So yeah, there's always a point, and I believe all the speakers here have it. So we cry sometimes, but you can't sit down and cry for long. Yeah. Wow, great. Naj. Is that Ibrahim? Yes. I mean, I think uh, business and then, then uh, entrepreneurship and then, I mean, the it's, I mean, points where you uh, want to give up is like <laughs> salt and what? Pepe. It goes hand in hand for me. 
because um i think there has been a lot of you know times and anytime like stephanie um said it would always i end that it always ends up propelling me to do better right Hello. so the very recent period i decided to give up was um last year in um august last year in august i decided i wanted to start down ninth march because i had gone through so many um so many blockages and then i realized that probably maybe my dream was just too big because i had a I ha and that's one thing too because all this while i had a goal but then i just didn't realize how big it was so when i was thinking of giving up i had a conversation with someone who tells me the truth um rough so i had a conversation with him and he was like um uh, naji don't you think sometimes your big your dream is just maybe your dream is just too big so it needs more time to marinate for you to get there and actually actually kind of like dawn on me that yeah maybe he's kind of right so maybe i should just have to take it easy and again like i said restructure and then forge ahead again because last year i lost four deals four very instrumental deals also on just this teaser i showed you i this teaser was done for, for the ANSI, uh, I was pitching it at the ANSI animation. It's an international festival for animation in France. It's actually like the biggest animation um, festival for animation. So I was pitching it there and I had engagements prior to even pitching. I had deals that I was supposed to go and come back and talk about. But the problem was that this teaser wasn't completed. So it messed up with me. I just couldn't finish the teaser miraculously because it's animation. Animation is tedious. It takes time. I just couldn't do it miraculously. And then the deal wasn't sitting there waiting for me. So I ended up losing it. So in the verge of losing it, I had to make a decision. Either I, I, I go tell these people and renegotiate in a way, or I just give up totally. So after th talking about it, I was like, okay, I had to go renegotiate with them, but then I don't know, but yeah, probably another another deal, another time, but I still have that conversation or that friendship or that relationship with them, but that I disappointed them. And this was all because of team. This was all because of lack of team and collaborators. So that's also another thing that like informed my, 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 um, that was it's also one of the things that informed my resolution to actually train people in the collaborative workflow and expand, you know. So you see, when I thought of losing or I mean giving up, then again I thought of like expanding more. That was a solution. The solution to not giving up was now thinking about starting a training that can expand. So for me, it goes hand in hand all the time. Anytime you decide to lose. You just have to focus on the reason. That's why I spoke about assertiveness. You always have to focus on the reason why you are doing it in the first place. If it resonates to you and it still is true to your, to you and your being, then you have to think of a way to move past the point where like, you know, you feel like you are, you are choked. You need to find a way, you know. And I think, I think every entrepreneur actually implements that. Like Stephanie said, she had to like create like my form of like you know moving past you know that challenge thank you thank you very much so uh mr Chas, are you back in okay so more mubarak more barica uh so maybe you can share maybe yeah okay mr Brown. yes I'm you can share. yeah the name yes. is mubarika mubarika great Mubarak is more of a male, so Mubarika is good, good, good. Yes. So as I said, the name is Mubarika. Yes. So I agree totally with uh, yes, I agree totally with what my fellow sisters said about the stage where you get stuck, and then uh, you feel like giving up. A lot of times I have experienced that. I started my business in 2013. That was way back. Like I started very early. And along the line, I think I have lost capital 
and started my business like four times. I didn't wow. give up. It's not that I was losing because of bad business. I think that has to do with a lot of family, which we usually don't consider. We're in Africa and it's like families depend on each other. So maybe you're the only one who is uh, starting a business and then uh, they only think you're rich and everybody brings a problem and then you try to solve it and it affects the business. So this level is, is stressful. Uh, Madame Halima spoke about uh, life, work and family. If you're married, you have uh, your work to deal with. You have uh, your family to deal with. You have your kids to deal with. So all these things accumulate stress. Only last week, I was so stressed. I felt like, okay, can I just close this business and get a break? But as uh, they also said, that is a period where you need to expand. It's your, your business get to a limit where you need. So for me, I am created a team, a team that I'll, uh, I would share the workload that will be assigned to each person a particular role to play that I do or because my business uh the fashion aspects with the IT I have a team but for the fashion with that one I am the photographer I am the editor I am building my website I'm the same person who designed the website I am the one managing the website my social medias I do the videos TikTok Instagram I do all of it and also manage customers manage customer orders all that so it's really stressful and i'm traveling i came back from germany and i was supposed to go to the u.s there's dubai i was like this is overwhelming i can't do this thing so i sat back and i look why don't i cancel all the other trips sit down try and work on the opportunities and the leads that i have got from germany then i can move on and delegate some of the house chores to somebody and also the marketing network to another person. And I sat down and then I wrote a very nice plan. I haven't executed the plan yet, but the fact that I've put it down on paper, that alone has helped a lot with the stress. So I think stress management is another thing we have to look at. Uh, we don't take, uh, in Africa, we don't really uh, take our mental health seriously. These businesses are draining. We don't have psychologists. We don't even have who to talk to. Sometimes it's even refreshing when you talk to another entrepreneur and try and find out what they're going through. The fact that they tell you they're going through the same thing that you are going through and that you are not alone, even that is healing enough. So I, I believe we should talk to each other. We should talk to friends who are in the same uh, kind of thing that we do. Like if the person is a business owner, the person would understand you when you talk about challenges. So let's talk to the right people. Let's talk to people in our circle. All those things are therapeutic and it will help us in the long run. Thank you. Wow, thank you very much. Wow, that's great. Alima, Bawa, you raised up your hand. Uh, maybe you have something to share. You can just do that. Yes. Um... For me, entrepreneurship is a, a lonely journey, and each one of us starts it with um, a motive. And there is a big difference between just a businessman and an entrepreneur. A businessman is all for the profit, and an entrepreneur most of the time is looking to solve a problem and make profit for himself and for others who work for him or her. And so when it gets to the time that you feel you are overstressed, you are depressed and you want to quit. You look at, you know, that hunger for growth impact the profit in future. When you look at the people for whose reason you started your business, for example, if you are working for rural farmers, they are your source of motivation. And so if you look at the fact that if you leave your business, who else is going to do it the way you are doing it? And what would be the future of those people whose problem you are solving? Suddenly, if you were in bed and thinking of this, you will sit up. And you would ask yourself, how do I go about this? Given that it's a lonely journey, but there are a lot of people who would be doing something similar to what you are doing. 
And most of the time, this stress comes in when the money is not flowing in well or when you decide to take on several roles that you could have delegated. And so you feel that, okay, let me talk to someone and I would be fine. Let me go back to where I am coming from. Look at your journey from where you, come from, you came from. And that alone is a motivator to keep going. You know, in Cow Tribe for seven years, I have felt like giving up so many times as a woman partnering a man to, you know, create a social problem that solves, a social a solution that solves a problem for people, millions of people in Africa. When you look at the people you are serving, that alone makes you sit up. And it has worked for me years, and it, it continues to work for me even as I'm exploring a new venture now. So for me, I think that we need to always go back to where we're coming from, for, for whose reason we are solving the particular problems that we are solving. And most of the time, you know, you would find that relevant energy. But if it is for financial reasons that you're giving up or you feel like giving up, keep talking to people expand your network you would get the right energy to keep moving wow wow this is powerful welcome daniela pia and uh, he's also a great influencer great person doing things doing great stuff in africa so mr charles since you are back the question has been that have you ever got into a point in your career where you wanted to give up your journey and I know that some of the challenges that you've gone through, uh, Eminem, one of them has been the sacking of you by your landlord to like just yes, to take your school to a new, a, a new place. I don't know, maybe if you can share one or two things about that. <laughs> uh, it's a confidence. You are reminding me of uh, some pepper <laughs> I went through. Yes, uh, I think my two sisters uh, are spoken well. I would come to your, your, your question and uh, asking me to share that with you. But I want to say something about um, our sister, the one who spoke before, uh, my dear sister, Alima. Mm -hmm. um, you see, she made reference to the fact that we are in Africa and for that matter, you know, this extended family, there are times you are the only person you need to solve problems here and there. That is perfect. We're in Africa, we believe in the extended family system, and then we need to help. We are not like the Europeans where everything is centered on the nuclear, uh, nuclear family. Nonetheless, as an entrepreneur, there is something that we need to know that it is not every problem that you are supposed to solve. And it is not every plea that you are supposed to accept. Let's keep that in mind. If you want to solve every little problem and accept every little plea, the very people that you are helping today, which they may see, they may see to be meager, are the very people who will blame you tomorrow and point fingers at you that you misuse your money. And so as an entrepreneur, there are times you have to say no, and there are times you need to say yes. That is something that is big, that one has to contain as an entrepreneur. Else, the challenges will be enormous. Saying no doesn't mean you hate the person, but there should be a distinction between family interference, problems you want to solve in the family, and your business. If you're able to draw that distinct line, then you will see something fruitful coming out. Wow. I'm not saying that we shouldn't help, but what I'm saying is that it is not every answer that should be yes. It is not every question that comes to you that should be yes. When you think the answer is not yes. Sister Alima, spoke about a motivation. Yes, you know what is keeping me going? They are my products. I'm a professional teacher. The, my, my, my primary work is teaching, and then the media work came along the way. And so I have had students 
who because of what I have done for them, today as we, there are students I taught in 1995 at Bamboy Junior, uh, Junior High. Today, some of them have made it, others are in UK, others are in Spain, some of them are military officers and they remit me. They send me money. So they call me and they sing songs that I sang with them and tears flow, they are my motivation. Even recently, those that have trained in the media landscape, they are making waves and they will call me and then tell me so many things that sometimes I feel like, no, this thing is not working. Let me stop it. But I look at them and I have, I have some sense of joy, fulfillment in me that if I stop today, there are people that we are trained. We have about quite a number of students on scholarship, 100% scholarship. Just because they are from deprived areas, they cannot do anything to support themselves. We train them for free. So sometimes I look at, I ask myself, if I quit, what will happen to these ones? So the motivation comes in. Then you keep going. You spoke about that building. <laughs> I, won't, I won't talk much about it, but it was the time I thought I should forget about everything. Because I told myself, after all, I'm a professional teacher, I'm, I'm working, I take salary. If I leave this thing, nothing will happen to me, nothing will happen to my, my, my family. But I look at the people who are following, the people who are depending on you. Because as I said, Northern region, Savannah, Upper East, Upper West, I mean, the five regions in the North, I stand to be corrected, but there is no accredited private media institution apart from our institution. So if we stop today, what will happen to the teaming youth who would want to be journalists, who would want to go into the communication uh, uh, sector? They will finally land themselves in quack places and then their lives will be bizarre. So after the hard times, it comes, but your motivation should be your products. If it is something you are selling, that should be your motivation. Some of us, our, our, our products are our motivation. And so every day, sometimes you are hot before you realize 200 Ghana CDs. I'm here to receive 100 CDs from Ali Mabawa. You, you came and joined me, Bishara, we worked, and now you are making money, you don't mind me. <laughs> so, so the hard times will come. The hard times will come. But look at what you are doing and the focus. And move ahead. But be very careful that you can never solve your family problems. You all your family, you cannot, no matter how rich you are. So draw a distinction between your business and then external family issues so that you'll be able to get to your destination. That is a little I have to add. Wow. Great and um, powerful there. So this is the champion summit and the purpose is that we want to innovate. We want to collaborate and we want to network with each other so that we can make Africa, we can make our lives, we can make our, the lives of our family great. So uh, Alima is saying that I should remind you that uh, GRA will come after you, Mr. Charles. Ghana Revenue Authority, they will come for gift tax and all the taxes. <laughs> so once they come... <laughs> well, I'll, I'll call on her. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's the only society lawyer we have. So uh, <laughs> Daniela Pierre just joined and uh, if you have, want to say something quickly, just say that. And uh, if you also have questions, we have one, we can take one question and we move on. So Daniela Pierre, if you are here, maybe you just want to say one or two things. Right. Hi Mustafa, you, <laughs> you have just put me on the spot. Right. Right. Um, that's a good job you are doing there. Um, I thought I should just join, listen to what is happening and also hopefully to network. So I've looked at the names, I've seen the um, speakers. So I'm, I'm just here to network. So um, I'll, 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 leave, I'll leave your program to run and then hopefully come prepared next time. Thank hey, you. That's wonderful. Thank you very much. That's Daniela Pia. And he leads Dream Focus International. They organize events and they do a lot of things. He's also an engineer and uh, he's doing great stuff. So finally, we've come to the end of this session. And uh, I want all the speakers, one, one minute, just your final thoughts. 
then you network. Also put in your details. If you want, I don't want to share contact details that I'm not allowed to share. So whatever you feel like you want to share to the audience, just put that in the comment section. Then we get to also, and the audience gets to pick that. And also this is going to go live on uh, Facebook again. It's already live on Facebook. We are live on Facebook. We are going to go live on uh, LinkedIn. It's going to go live on YouTube. It's going to go live on uh, Instagram and also TikTok and also my own radio station, which is I Am Radio. And I Am Radio is going to be the voice section that goes on live and it's going to run there for one month. So maybe someone will hear this and it is going to be a source of inspiration for that person. As young Africans, let's use technology, let's innovate, let's create, let's network, let's collaborate, and let's understand that money is there. There are people who have the ideas, they don't have the resources. There are people who have resources, they don't have the ideas. There are people who are just willing to invest in this. But if you don't meet the right people, if you don't connect to the right audience, your talent is okay, but it may not be enough. You just need to have that right touch to make that difference. And today we have Mo Barika and I would do, who is an entrepreneur. She's doing great works. And she also have even had uh, her bags business and technology and all those stuff. We also have Najlao, the animation madam, uh, who is making great strides in the animation world and in the movie industry. We also have uh, Stephanie Ibrahim, Mama G herself, who is the founder of Illucrate Multimedia. We have our own Mr. Charles Ayandago, who is the co-founder of IBMNJ. They have branches in Tamale and uh, Yendi. And hopefully, I believe that by the end of this year, we'll see what branch or maybe towards Bolaga area. So finally, one, one minute for you to run up. Who starts? Okay, yeah, it's our confidence. Right. Maybe I would, I would start. Great. I, would, I would end by saying that it is not over. Don't give up. Whether you are yet to start or you have started, you are in the process. Whichever stage you have reached, no matter the challenges, no matter the problems, see them as avenues to break through. See your challenges as avenues to break through. Don't give up. That is not the solution. I would have given up a long time ago because of so many factors, but we are still moving and we believe that one day we would get to where we are getting to. Institute of Business Management and Journalism is the place. We run a two-year diploma program in journalism and media studies, and then one year top up for communication studies. So, then you can take the number 54 540 You can get in touch with us. The main school is in Kumasi, Cold Room, and then Amman Room. So wherever that you are, you can get in touch with us so that you can join us for professional training so that you can achieve whatever that whatever dream that you have. In Tamale, we are located at Kamvili uh, Tunaili, just close to the end of uh, the last stop, Tunaili last stop. Or if you call this number that I've given, I think we'll stay in touch. Thank you very much and God bless you. Welcome. Uh, Stephanie? Yeah, um, to add to what he said earlier, um, I'll just want to emphasize um, Change, change is very essential, and that's innovation for me. So when one refuses to innovate, you risk um, you risk being stale, or shall I say, being stagnant, not growing. And that even has a bigger risk where you fall out of place. So it's important for everyone to consider continuously growing or risk um, failing. Yeah, so that's what I want to add to what um, the last speaker said. Right, right. Najla. Yes, Mr. Ibrahim. 
So um, I think what I would say um, is that uh, in line with, um, of course, my overcoming adversity story, because I like to stick to the, the, the script. So in line with that, I, was, I would like to say that um, you are never not enough or too short of something to get what you want. Basically, I'm saying that anytime you want something and you feel like you can't get it because of this, there are moments you, you are able to find out or you are able to point out the exact reason why you can't reach what you, can, you want to reach is where you have your solution because then you have your problem. You can work on it and then you will be able to achieve it. Everyone is enough. You just have to find that spark, that thing that really um, motivates you to go for what you want and to keep going for it and to keep keeping it by yourself. Yeah. Thank you. Wow. Thank you very much. Uh, um, also, please. Yeah. <laughs> I forget. Um, yeah. Knife March Studios is uh, a production company. We do live action and animation, mostly animation. And we are open to a lot of collaborations. Even uh, with your brand, we can uh, we can we can tell a story around your brand in the form of a series or a film or whatever and stuff like that. I'm open to collaboration because that's how we grow well. Yeah, thank you. Ninth March Studios. So, uh, more tribe. Yes. Okay, so for me, I would say that um, don't give up. Try again. If you don't succeed the first time, you try again. You try again until you succeed. Uh, there's no reason for failure. If, if you're determined and if you're passionate about what you do, then you can persevere and achieve uh, your goal. Um, for me, I always am passionate about startups and then anyone who is here who wants to start up or who is in the process, do not make it all about the money. Make it about the solution. Do not wait on to be handed over. There's nothing like that. You have to go out there. You have to work out. You have to talk to people. As a micro mentor for UNICEF, I do feel um, mentorship for startups. So if you're here and you're starting up, you don't know what to do uh, in terms of your career, in terms of business ideas, you can contact me on 0266-133630. I would help you, coach you through how to start up and uh, navigate through the entrepreneur world. And also, uh, if you want to follow me on Instagram at Mo Tribe Shop, you see what I do. I make bags. Uh, with our native fabrics, that's the fugu specifically, is what we work with. And then we make beautiful, fascinating bags for our local fabrics. And then we make it to meet the international standard. So you can see us on, uh, you can check us out on Instagram, on TikTok and Facebook as Mo Tribe Shop and also our website, uh, our website as well. And also if you want to, how, if you want us, if you want me to give you a consultation in terms of IT, your setup, I mainly do securities. So I look at threat management uh, in terms of security threat on your network. I also do security cameras as installations and stuff. Uh, so just general networking and threats. So security in general is my expertise. If you also want to set up an office and you need consultations on what gadgets that you need to, to, to give your uh, your office uh, space, uh, to guard your office space, you can still contact me on the same number, 0266-133630. Um, my phones at lines are always open. I'm uh, also open and available to help anybody who call me. And thank you once again, Mr. Ibrahim, for giving me this opportunity. And also my partner from Egypt is also joining us. His name is Islam. I don't know if he's still here. But I want to say thank you for finding time to join us here. All right. Thank you very much. Right. Thank you very much, Islam. Thank you to all of you. Thank you, Najlao. Thank you, Stephanie Ibrahim, Alija Taisa, Charles, uh, Mr. Charles Indago, Magdalene, Daniela Piazzola, to Abubakar, Avugwedam Caesar, and Provia. Thank you to all of you. This is a time for Africa. 
we need to change our story. So if if you listen to all the speakers, it's just to inspire you, to let you know that you are not alone, to let you know that you can make all the mistakes, to let you know that, yes, all you just need to do is to believe in yourself, work on your talent, and press the send button. Maybe it's a proposal that you want to send, and you are doubting yourself. Maybe it's a letter that you want to, collaboration letter, and you feel like you are not even big enough. Just press the button and make sure that you make the world a better place. You are in this world, and don't be surprised. And I am not surprised that your presence, each one of you, your presence in the world is making the world a better place. You are the reason the world is still here. And, and I believe in that. You, wherever you are, you are the best. You are the reason the world is still like this. You are making the world a better place. So stop doubting. Just keep believing, keep pushing, and keep doing what you do best. And the little that you put in, the little that you may even doubt and you say, oh, why? Why me? What I'm even doing, is that important? I'm telling you, it's important. Go out, make a difference. Thank you all for honoring the invitation to be part of the Champion Summit. It was supposed to be yesterday, but we had mixed communication between the designers and uh, it was the first flyers were, were like, I put out where first, second match, the second bat of fly, uh, flyers, third match. And uh, wonderfully me, I am the same designer who put out the same dates. So I take blame for that. And, and I just want to thank you, even though it was supposed to be yesterday, but we still made it possible. And the recording will be there, we shared with all of you. Sorry to Mr. Charles, some of your students couldn't join because of the, the I think the passcode or something that we didn't rectify first. But I just want to say thank you. Let's keep this collaboration. Let's show up and let's make the world a better place. Thank you very much to all of you, Daniel, Pierre, Magdalene, Salah, to Najlao. And please, go big. Do big things. Don't cut your coat according to your size. Do what you can do and make Africa a better place. Thank you very much. I appreciate your coming. Mo Barak, I will do. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah, Salah, is that Salatu? Salatu, is it Salatu I know? Uh, maybe. Maybe, I don't. Salatu, if you are here, are you the Salatu? Yes, hello, good evening, everyone. Yes, <laughs> I'm in the meeting and I've been following all that is happening. And I must say that, um, the information that, that have been shared, the stories by our speakers are very inspiring. And we hope to inspire more, especially to the young ones that are up and coming. And Ibrahim, keep it up. I'm so proud and ah. I'm happy that you are pushing the course of the youth and the young ones. Ah, Thank salatu. you and enjoy your evening. Salah. Yes. <laughs> is that confidence? Uh -huh. Is that confidence? Sorry? Yes. Let, 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 me, let me say hi to my boss. I didn't know my boss was uh, so, so part. You see? Caesar. <laughs> Caesar. <laughs> Caesar. Okay, Caesar. Uh, we, were together, <laughs> we were together at uh, Discovery TV, the first TV station. He was the editor. Oh. You yes, see? he was the editor. He was, he was brought from Kumaso, I said, Accra to Tamale. <laughs> wow. wow. Yeah, so Caesar is, uh, has been a very good person, a very good friend and a very good boss. So I want to say hello to, to, to him. So Caesar, if you are listening, I salute you and keep up the good work. I monitor your radio work too in Kumasi. Keep it up. Yes. Wow. Wow. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Caesar. Okay. Caesar is here. Yes. That's great. And uh, Salah too. Uh, maybe next time you share your food your business stuff, uh, the summer, <laughs> the cereals and all those stuff. So we have great people here. I think we can do it. We can change Africa. I didn't know my boss was also here. Salah too. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you very much. Have a blessed day. Thank you. Bye-bye.